prospect. Uh, looks like the guy's being chased by a dog. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today I'm taking the Honda Navi out for a ride through Prospect, which is just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. It's an area where uh, you can see over to the left, some of the houses have their own little private lake. So not exactly a, a low-income area, um, relatively affluent area in town. I know that I've gone through videos that go through different parts of the Louisville area and surrounding places. Um, you know, I've gone through, through areas that go through some of the lower-income neighborhoods, some of the higher-income neighborhoods. Um, you know, on the higher end, I've gone through like Indian Hills, which is a neighborhood that's, you know, pretty high average home value and income. And then I've gone through some of, you know, the kind of the west end of downtown Louisville, where it's kind of the opposite, lower incomes and lower property values. So I like going for rides through different areas uh, and not just sticking to the exact same spots. So now I'm going through Prospect. Uh, I'm in the Hunting Creek neighborhood. And they have a golf course through here and a country club in addition to all the houses. I did not look up all the demographic information for what the average incomes and home values are, but yeah, it's up there. And this is just the kind of area that's pretty fun to go through on the Honda Navi because the Navi is not a Speed Demon fast bike. So when you go through neighborhoods that have speed limits of 25, 30, 35, it's kind of in the sweet spot for this bike. You can do 45 or 40. The only problem is a lot of times when the speed limit is 45, to most people that means 60, which this bike cannot do without multiple modifications. There's the, it looks like the country club for the golf course over to the right. And I'm, uh, Recording the video today on the Insta360 GO 3. It's kind of an interesting camera setup where it has the little tiny camera that you can kind of place wherever. So I have that on the helmet mount. Then it has a case that you put the camera back in. Or you can operate them separately that has an LCD screen. That, uh shows you what the camera is capturing and lets you change the settings and all that um, and it charges the camera the will go three and keeps it going longer so right now I just like I said I have the camera on a helmet mount on my helmet and I have a separate mic inside my helmet and then once I'm done recording I'll just drop this little camera back into the case and it'll charge it back up but the benefit of that is it shoots in both widescreen 16x9 and 9x16 full screen, or at least there's a mode on it called free frame where you can record and uh, it just gets the entire readout from the sensor and then in either the desktop app or the mobile app, you can reframe it to either be a 9x16 full screen video if you want to post it to, you know, Instagram Reels or TikTok. And it's a full ring of the sensor, so you're actually getting, you know, more vertical space above and below where it would be if it was a widescreen video. So it's not just cropping into the middle part of a widescreen video and um, not having a ton in frame. 
So it's a nice option if you want to record and um, post videos to multiple locations. It allows you to do that all in one camera. Now the quality I would say is probably not, you know, up there with the GoPro Hero 11 cameras. It's not quite as good. It's, you know, not super, super far off. To the non-discerning viewer, probably not a ton of differences, but... This is just a way I can, you know, share videos in multiple places. Oh, and then the other thing on the Go 3 is the video output when you use the free frame mode is 1440p, which is also known as 2K. So, not 4K, not UHD 4K, but 2K. Um, but when you're using the Insta360 app, you can export the files as 4K and it'll up-res it. Or you can do that in editing software. So that's one caveat. And then if it has a mode that's the non-free frame mode, like a standard mode, where it does the stabilization, everything built in, and you can't change the video after it's been recorded. Um, it's all, everything's baked in, and you can't change anything. Uh, and that has a max resolution of 2.7K. So a little bit higher resolution, but you don't get the ability to reframe the footage a little bit and to change it, you know, the aspect ratio is, aspect ratio is easier, is easily. And that's where you would have to take the, you know, just the 14 by, or the 16 by nine video and crop into a small sliver of it to get a vertical video. So actually I'm not gonna exit this neighborhood. I'm just gonna, go around here and go back in and the Navi's got 1756 miles on it I did the uh, initial service on it last year and then did the one-year service on it this year and I think on the Navi's there was a recall on the speedometer cable that got uh, corrected while it was in for the re uh, for the annual service I mean I never had any problems with it. I think it's just that it could get caught based on its placement um, so they just rerouted a little bit and like I said neighborhoods like this this is this is a great bike to cruise around on um, it's not super loud, so you're not going to be annoying all the neighbors who probably are paying attention to stuff in a little bit nicer neighborhoods. <laughs> um, through through these neighborhoods, you probably uh, would have someone say something if you ride through at nighttime, revving it up super loud. And as you can see, people through this area ride around golf carts. So people ride golf carts from their houses to the golf course or the country club and back and forth. Pretty big houses. Let's go left. Oh, this, no, oh, that's a, that's a dead end. I'll go through a, one of these side streets before I exit. So you know, kind of all larger houses. Let's go through here, even though this is no outlet. But yeah, in neighborhoods where they, you know, I would assume there's some type of HOA that governs stuff out here, some type of rules, but um, they probably would not be super tolerant of super loud motorcycles rolling through, revving up at nighttime, being loud, so. A Navi is a good idea if you want a bike that's relatively quiet. Again, I think the caveat is how fast you need to go. If you need to go consistently 50 plus, the Honda Mini Motos may not quite fit the bill for that. 
I mean, plenty of other bikes do, but at least with me on this one, with wind, um, it can get up to around 50, but it needs plenty of space and time, and not a ton of wind coming directly in your face. Forty-five, it can pretty much do, you know, unless you're on a pretty, pretty uh, significant incline. You can typically do forty-five with that much problem. Forty is piece of cake. You can do that anytime. Thirty-five, no problem. just uh, a lot of times neighborhoods like this will kind of be disconnected from each other and you have to take a main road with the high speed limit to get to it. I don't think I'd want to take this bike in daytime traffic. I'll go through here. I don't think you'd want to take this bike in daytime traffic through a neighborhood, you know, through streets where the speed limit's like 50 and people go faster than that. That would be pretty nerve-wracking on this, I would think. But at the speed limits, you know, 35 or 40, it's, it's fine. And when I, you know, headed out for this ride, it was actually pretty decent weather. It was still in the 70s, so I wore the protective jacket thing and gloves when I went out. And this is one of the, I think, Engine Hawk jackets I got from Rock.com. It's where it has, you know, like, some leather, leather padding on the shoulders, and then it's got the, the Kevlar plating or whatever the stuff is, and the the elbows, the shoulders in the back. So if you were to fall, it should help out. And I think the material is supposed to be kind of anti-abrasion. You know, it's not supposed to rip and shred easily either, so... I did not come out here... Because I've gone on rides in this area before. Taking the main roads out here can be kind of nerve-wracking because you're going down a lot of roads that have pretty high speed limits. Um, but instead I went down River Road and took that all the way till it got into Prospect. Uh, looks like a guy's being chased by a dog. Not sure what's happening over there. Yeah, so River Road is a, you know, the main stretch of its speed limits, 45 miles per hour for cars, 35 miles per hour for large trucks, which means every ride does 45. And it was, it was fine getting out of here, didn't have too many, didn't have any problems. It was able to go fast enough for nobody to be up my tailpipe. Yeah, so this was Hunting Creek. I'll go through another one of these neighborhoods um, before I wrap up. There's another one just down the street. Yeah, these are uh, neighborhoods I think that may be out of my price range. But, uh, interesting ride through, and, and something too that I. I don't know exactly how they monitor these or how they police this. Um, because something when I see neighborhoods that have speed limits of 25 that are pretty enforced and followed, a question that I always wonder is, oh, okay, well, is that a safe place 
to go for rides on bicycles. So if you have a street bike and you want to go out and ride on the road, could you come out to the, a neighborhood like this and ride around without too much problem? I mean, while I've been recording this video, I've seen a bike or two. Um, so I don't know if they would be upset if you come out here and don't live in the area. I'm not sure exactly where you would park. Um, where you were I'm not sure exactly where you can park and, and unload your bike, but everybody does seem to kind of stick around the speed limit. So coming out here and going through some of these neighborhoods could be an option if it's a large group ride of you know 15 20 people and you're not residents of the neighborhood that could uh, get some people upset I would guess so just know that on the way out here on River Road there were a few uh, cyclists And when it's a road, the speed limit's 45 miles per hour. It's, to some extent, taking your life in your own hands. Um, being on a bicycle, doing 20. But at the same time, I guess people think, you know, it's probably safe to be on a long, kind of wide open road like that versus stuff with a lot of traffic lights and intersections and places to get tangled up with traffic. And then I'm about to turn out here onto US 42. Alright. We'll go through this neighborhood that's over here on the right. The one that has a uh, private lake or pond, whatever you want to call that, with the fountains in it. Little guard tower thingies. I think these roads are no exit or no outlet, but... I can go through, I guess. It's a private lake. I would venture to guess if you come through and you're not a resident, probably not going <laughs> to last too long around here before you get asked to leave. Like I said, you know, for riding a bike like this, for the Navi or something kind of quiet, and not super flashy, probably fine. I probably wouldn't recommend coming out here and popping wheelies and uh, burnouts and revving up loudly. Don't think that would go too well. All right, so I'm gonna turn around. Be nice to have uh, that view from your living room. And since it's not a, uh, you know, offshoot of a lake or river, not a lot of chances it's going to overflow. <laughs> Which is good. Let's see, and I'm turning on. So this this road I'm going to turn right on that goes to this neighborhood is Green Mirror Boulevard. There's a clubhouse. It is always interesting going through different parts of town neighborhoods like this. Because, you know, a lot of the rides that record, you know, go through or start in the Highlands area. 
And there are some pretty nice swanky houses in, in sections, kind of close to Cherokee Park or different areas. Um, but there's not like a consistent large neighborhood that has as many consistently large homes. It covers as much of a large area. There's, you know, some pretty nice houses off of the Alta Vista Road area, kind of um, not too far from Cherokee Park. I would love to be able to, you know, own a home, but they don't quite have the, um, you know, the kind of neighborhood setup that these houses do, where you're kind of off of the main road, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if there are police departments or security to each neighborhood. I don't know how all that works. security or whatnot, but in this area too, you're also you're not super far from the Ohio River and the kind of River Road area. Because, um, like I said, the way I got out here was I took River Road until it. Um, meets Prospect until it meets up with US 42. So it's uh, pretty close to the river, and then there's Kennedy Hayes Park, which isn't too far, which is a park with um, you know some basketball goals, baseball field, uh, track to run or walk or cycle, and then there's a nature preserve that you can access from there that goes right up to the Ohio River. That's pretty cool. Um, so there's that. In addition to, I'm sure a lot of these neighborhoods have, you know, like I just went through the Hunting Creek neighborhood, they had the golf course and the country club. There are probably plenty of amenities available through the area. Uh, I guess I'll go straight. But yeah, I'm not doing a ton of driving out on the main road on US 42 just because it's high speed limit. It would just probably just be wind noise. <laughs> and I don't like having to, if I can avoid it, ride this thing with the throttle pinned to full throttle the entire time that I'm riding. It's kind of um, nerve wracking. There's tall trees over here. Recently, there were some storms that came through the area. Looks like either there weren't many trees impacted here, or anything that was impacted has already been cleaned up. Um, it was like the Highlands area was pretty impacted. Because, you no know, Friday I was out, and a huge old tree fell um, right by the main road, Barstown Road, and luckily didn't get anywhere close to my car, but... You know, it fell out and buckled the sidewalk and had that street blocked and caused a bunch of issues. So, don't see that quite as much out here. So, I don't know if they didn't get this or if everything's just been cleaned up already. But, yeah. So, this this was taking the Honda Navi out for a ride through the Prospect area just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. But, yeah. That'll wrap it up till next time. Later.